Okay, so we're shifting from a discussion of um, strategy and its relation to cost management. Now we're going to get into some basics. I mean, some real basics. It's going to be a repeat for some. Some components will be a repeat for you here. So why I want to get it out of the way today. Um, for some of you, though, maybe you know there'll be fresh parts in here. There definitely will be some fresh parts as I think about it. Um, we're going to get into some basic cost-related definitions. We'll talk about cost drivers and cost pools and cost objects. Those are probably terms you haven't heard, but they're important terms within cost accounting. Um, and we'll talk about volume structure and execution and activity cost drivers. And we'll talk about it a little bit as it relates to product and service costing. Okay, the first set of terms that you all may or may not have heard before is variable versus fixed costs. Um, variable costs change as activity level changes. So they are per cost is per unit. A fixed cost remains the same no matter what your activity level. So as you sell more units, your fixed cost per unit goes down because you're amortizing over more units. Okay, did I spend too much time on that? <laughs> Hope not, because we're going to see it again. Fixed costs stay the same. Variable costs go up per unit at a constant rate. Now, if you look at variable and fixed costs, you know, we, we talk about them as being linear. Really, they're not linear, but there's really only a re sm relatively small relevant range that you're looking at for your company for that product. And so within that relevant range, it approximates linearity. So we simplify it to say within that relative, relevant range, it is linear. So, but if, you, if it's truly, if the relevant range is wider, then you need to think about the nonlinear relationship between your costs and total output. Marginal cost versus average cost. The marginal cost is the extra cost that will be required to produce one additional unit. The average cost is the total cost to produce all your units divided by the number of units you have. The marginal versus average costs. And your, av your, your marginal cost and your average cost, for that matter, go down as you produce more units because your variable cost per unit stays the same, but your marginal cost goes down because your fixed cost for that marginal unit is less because it's being amortized over more units. So the more units you produce, all, all else being equal within your linear relevant range will result Postpone. Okay. Make sense? Good. Give me a, a variable cost for Southwest and a fixed cost for Southwest West Airlines. That's a variable cost. Give me a fixed cost. It's the warehouse for the planes. They're the hangars. How about a variable cost? So a delay. If you think about the output being a flight, then the delay, I guess, would be a variable cost. Employee salary. We could um, 
some of them are in union, so it's not as variable as you'd like. But um, it, it, employee salary is often a variable cost. Uh, in the case of Southwest, there are none. <laughs> Fuel costs, okay. What's that? Um, is it fixed or is it? Uh huh. So the airline industry has a lot of fixed costs, right? Yeah, the airline industry is a tough industry. How about a retailer? What's the fixed cost? Like Target. Yeah, the, the bricks and mortar. And what's the variable cost? The 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 the, the, the goods that they sell would be a variable cost. Okay. Nailed it. Okay, another are direct costs and indirect costs. We may start to get into types of costs you may not know. Maybe not. Direct costs are costs that can easily and conveniently be traced to a product or a department. So the cost of paint that's put on a car. You know how much paint you had before, you know how much paint you have after, you can say here's the amount of paint we put on that car. That would be a direct cost in, the, in, in a car, building a car. Indirect cost, the cost that must be allocated in some fashion to a product, the cost of advertising for, an, for, for Southwest. You can't associate it with a um, particular flight or a particular, uh, yeah, I guess a particular flight. So the cost has to be allocated to each of your flights to understand whether certain routes are profitable or not profitable cost of advertising somehow has to be allocated. So direct and indirect costs. So if you think about direct and indirect costs for a manufacturer, some direct costs are direct materials costs, and that is some relationship between the price you pay for those materials plus the freight for shipping those materials to your site minus any discounts that you might have gotten on that, those materials, which factors into the price. And then you have to give a, an allowance for scrap and shrinkage and defects and things of that nature. So that would be your direct material cost for producing something. So you need to think about the shrinkage um, in the cost. Indirect material costs are things such as rags, lubricants, um, small tools, things of that nature, things you might need on a factory floor just to make the factory run, but you can't associate it with a unit of output. They're a general cost. And they can be pretty big. No, because these are direct material costs. These are, these are indirect material costs, so it's not labor. We're going to get to that in the next slide. We differentiate materials from labor. I mean, you might also have electricity and things like, like that would be in here. So direct labor and indirect labor is its own category. So direct labor are those labor units that can be re easily associated with a unit of output. So the wages plus any allowance for non-productive time. Many of you, if not most of you, will be working at accounting firms. Direct labor is the major cost in your account, an accounting firm, and depending upon your seniority level in the firm, they expect uh, a junior person to be about 120% chargeable, and as you get more and more senior, less and less chargeable, with other time being met, spent for other things. 120 is never facetious, but it's going to be close to 100. But you need to think about vacation time and things like that as you develop the um, percent chargeability. Indirect labor could be things like that a supervisor can't be associated with an individual product, just generally associated um, with the factory. So indirect costs combined 
for materials, labor, and anything else you might have. It's called overhead. And it might be called indirect manufacturing cost, factory overhead. You'll generally see it as overhead or OH. So you now have three main types of costs, direct materials, direct labor, and overhead. You might see this some, from time to time. Direct labor and direct um, materials are sometimes called prime costs when combined. We'll definitely be working with this. Direct labor plus overhead are often called conversion costs, the cost of converting a raw material um, to a product. Think of it that way. So those are some terms that you need to know. Then there are controllable and uncontrollable costs. Um, so when you're trying to, well, I'm sorry, when you're trying to, when you're compensating somebody on their success or failure in doing their job, a manager on their success or failure, you'd like to compensate them on controllable costs. Because it's tough to blame somebody or reward somebody for things that were out of their control. So the cost of the food used in a restaurant, the manager can have something to do with that. How, how is that manager handling shrinkage and waste and um, quality and things of that nature? That's, that's controllable. But the cost of national advertising um, would not be controllable by a, a manager in a specific location. That would be non-controllable cost. So when you evaluate them, you want, don't want to be thinking about that cost um, as to whether or not they're succeeding at their job. That's controllable and non-controllable. Okay, the next term is opportunity and sunk costs. Opportunity costs are the potential benefit that is given up when one alternative is selected compared to another. So by coming to college, if you didn't come to college, you could have earned $20,000 a year. $20,000. Your opportunity cost for choosing to attend college is twenty thousand. That's the cost you're you're giving up. I know we talked about this last semester. Some costs are costs that were occurred in the past that when you do analyses going forward um, and you want to make decisions, you can consider. So you bought an automobile two years ago for twelve thousand. That twelve thousand is sunk because you bought it. Um, whether you drive it, whether you park it, whether you trade it, whether you sell it, or whatever you're going to do with it, you still have already spent that 12000 That's a sunk cost. You take it out of your analysis, unless you could sell the car, in which case it's not fully sunk. Okay. Product costs versus periodic costs. Product costs are the costs to complete the manufacturing steps in the value chain. and to purchase and transport the product to the location of sale. In, merch in merchandising companies, so, so manufacturing companies do the um, development and then um, sell it. Now, merchandising firms are really only, they, they buy and then they sell. That's what a merchandiser does. So a Macy's, they don't actually manufacture things, they're a merchandiser. So they, their costs, Product costs are the cost to purchase and get it to location set. Period costs are everything that's not a product cost, um, and it's all the other costs incurred in terms of managing and selling the product. And let's call that a breakpoint.